guess what? Who we got on the podcast, man? David Naka, Nakayama, man, like straight from Hawaii. Did you just did you just fly in? I did. Yeah, just yesterday. Thanks for having me. Good to talk with you guys. How was the flight, man? The it, flight is not so bad. You know, as uh, you know, you're being you're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's five hours to get anywhere, and it's one of those. It's a five-hour flight, so it's one of the easier flights that I have. Did you fly in from? Did you fly Hawaiian or Aloha? Uh, United. United. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. How was United, man? Did, did, did they treat you okay? Do I have to go in? Uh... United is good. United gave me an upgrade. Uh, last time I went to New York, and they gave me an upgrade to that. You know that that lay down? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. United has been treating me well recently. <laughs> Dude. Dude. They better, man. They better, bro. This interview is sponsored by United. <laughs> Not United. You, where's our, where, where's, our, where's our royalties, man? Where's our royalties? <laughs> let me ask you, man. Do you have any projects you want to uh, let my audience know before we get started? Yeah. You know, there's one really exciting project that we have coming up in January. It's called Gwenverse. Oh. Okay. And it's a multiverse of Gwen Stacy. So you all know Spider Gwen or Ghost Spider. Uh -huh. What we're introducing in, in Gwenverse number one is a whole new universe where she's become Captain America, Wolverine, Captain Marvel, you know, this is all, all different ones. And it all comes out in January with Gwenverse number one. So I'm very excited about that. I've got two covers for the series. Hey man, your covers are awesome, man. Can you can you give us like a quick rundown on how you do, you do your covers? Do you use, you do, you do original art and I think you use Photoshop as well? Or, and that's true. I, I'm a one-stop shop, so there's no penciler, or anchor, colorist. Okay. It's just me. I think a lot of my magic happens in the coloring phase yep. when I get into digital paint and Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And I think of myself as a hybrid between a computer digital artist and more of a traditional comic artist. So my, my style is a fusion of the two. Man, I, you know, to make things work on Photoshop, you have to be an artist. Because I see a lot of people doing Photoshop that don't know how to do Photoshop. <laughs> you know, right? And there's people that it just comes intrinsically well to, you know? Well, I th it's like everything. To get good at something, you need to put ten, the 10,000 hours into it or whatever. And and I guess I have by now. <laughs> Are you a Malcolm Gladwell fan? I heard the 10,000 hours there. Ah, yes. I'm a big fan, actually. Is that where that quote comes from? Yeah, man. The outliers. I'm a huge fan of a Malcolm Gladwell, the 10,000 yeah. hour rule. I use that quote all the time, and I love Malcolm Gladwell, but I'm not sure I could have told you that's where a quote comes from. So thank you for reminding me. <laughs> oh, man. You I, I, I remind myself about that when I tell people I work with. 10,000 hour rule, man. Yeah, hey, um, it's true. What soundtrack do you listen when you're doing your art? Oh gosh, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I have a lot of YouTube videos running on the side. If it's music, I might be listening to, you know, a lot of alternative rock or Bad Religion is, uh, is my favorite band, mm -hmm. if I had to pick one. What podcast do you listen to? Oh, so many. I like, uh, I like The Daily from the New York Times. I like um, This American Life. I okay. like the Savage Love Cast. I like Radio Lab. Sound Opinions, lots of them. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm a big WTF fan, Mark Marin. Yeah. Yeah, great great stuff. Really, really great stuff. Like, yeah. I think I was raised by Mark Marin in my 30s. <laughs> that's all I used to listen to, man. I get that, yeah. So let me ask you a couple fun questions, man. All right. Besides art, what are your hobbies? Oh, well, no, there's no life beyond art. <laughs> I'm kidding. The The one thing I do for fun is uh, video games. So I just lucked out and got my PS5 finally. So awesome. starting to get into some Ratchet and Clank. I heard it was Savage. I heard it was Savage trying to get that PS5. It has been really hard. And you know what? I actually, you know how PlayStation itself opened up that sort of lottery to be able to buy? Yep. I, I was actually got into that. So that's how I got it. Okay, cool. I'm, yeah. good. Not, now for the fun stuff, man. Hmm. What advice would you give to your 18-year-old self? Oh, gosh. Probably just to relax. Keep keep going, you know? Like, when you're that old and you don't know if it's going to work, the scariest part is the uncertainty. You just don't know if you're spending your life the right way and if it's ever going to happen. But I'm 43 now, and, you know, you work hard at something long enough, eventually it can happen. Hey, man, 1978. 1978 for me too. Yeah, we both four, both four to three. Yeah, that's right. And you were a big video game fan, so I'm gonna ask you a video game question. Yes. If you were a video game, what would some of the if, if video game if life was a video game, mm. what would some of the cheat codes be? Oh, the cheat codes? I mean, probably just getting knowledge into your brain faster. That's the hardest part, right? You can't become good at anything. This seems like the theme of our conversation today. Right. Yeah. That 10,000 hours, you know. Uh, 
uh, just being able to, to get what's in your brain onto the paper, you know, has taken a long time. And I don't know if I'm still quite there yet, but that's what it's all about when you're learning the magic trick of art, right? Mm -hmm. And what, okay, we're gonna get, we're gonna get even funner. Mm. What is your favorite bad good movie? And I'll tell you mine. Okay. For an example, my bad good movie is Top Gun. Top Gun. What is your bad good movie? Oh gosh, I don't know. Uh, like, you know, it's like you kind of like- I know you, what you mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it might be something like Evil Dead or something like a purposefully campy movie. I think a lot of people would say that's a good, good movie, but uh, uh, you know what? You know what's a terrible movie that I like a lot? What? It's 13 Ghosts. There you go, bro. I the... fucking love that movie, but everyone thinks of it as, <laughs> as trash. <laughs> the bad, the bad, good movie. Okay, you seem like a really cool guy, so I'm going to ask you a really like uh, strange question. <laughs> Bring it. What set of items could you buy that would make the cashier the most uncomfortable? Uh, one more time. The items that would make the year uncomfortable? What set of items would you buy that would make a cashier uncomfortable? Oh, a cashier. At uh, a store, like if you were like yeah. at Rayleigh's. Oh man, it would be all the sex products. <laughs> so first, first fill up your bin with like nothing but condoms and lube and all kinds of stuff like that. <laughs> That would definitely put someone off. <laughs> then buy a lot of feminine products. Like th there will be questions for sure, right? If you're a guy, maybe some depends in there. What else would be weird? Tampons. Yeah, I already covered that in the you, feminine you, products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be the worst. It's it's for me is when I have to go to the store and you know buy my wife stuff. It's like okay, uh, you're right. Okay, you, there you go. There you go. <laughs> all right, man. If you could, rem if, if in all honesty, what are some of your guilty pleasures that you are willing to admit? Hmm, good question. I think a lot of my musical taste probably is appealing only to me. Uh, I don't know if I can, any of the bands would even mean anything to anybody, but uh, uh, some of my music I'm sure would qualify. And then I like, I'm sure like everybody, I like some TV shows that other people don't like. I, I'm, I'm struggling coming up with great examples that would like really like wow people that I'm also willing to stand behind. <laughs> I want to ask you this. Yeah. Are you, are, do you watch Friends or do you watch Seinfeld? Uh, I think both of those shows are okay. Okay. They're, they're watchable, but I don't love either one. What did, out of all, out of both of them, which one do you like the best? I think I like Friends a little bit better. Who do you identify most with on Friends? Hmm, Chandler. Chandler, dude, Chandler, I, I think I'm, I think I'm a Joey. Am I a Joey? Bro? Yeah? I'm a, You're a Joey? Or, nice. I, I, or I might be the uh, 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 Jennifer Anson's uh, boyfriend. What's his name? Oh, What's Richard? It? Richard? No. no. It, oh, that's Monica's boyfriend. Uh, I forget. That guy, whatever that yeah, guy's name I is. Forget. I forget. But I think, I'm, I think I'm a Joey, man. I don't know. I think I'm a Joey. <laughs> um, last question, man. It is Christmas time. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, man. You too. Um, what is your guilty ple pleasure Christmas song? Oh, I hate Christmas music, to be honest with you. I don't, there's not one that I like. It, it, I, when it comes to Mariah Carey, bro. I hate it. Oh, I hate no. it with a fiery passion. I'm sorry to tell you, but. Uh, not even Boys to Men? None of them. I, no, I, no. I hate all Christmas music. I, I'm such a Grinch, but like, uh, the reality is, like, I've heard the songs way too many times, and then once a year, they come back to torture me. <laughs> so I, I wish there were no Christmas songs. Hey. <laughs> Hey man, uh, you know, thank you for coming on the Hood Rap Podcast. Mahalo, <laughs> mahalo, and aloha. Aloha, aloha. All right.